you are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 430. What would an ocean be without a monster lurking in the dark? It would be like sleep without dreams. Werner Herzog. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, how to turn your independent film into a profitable business. It's harder today than ever before for independent filmmakers to make money with their films, from predatory film distributors ripping them off to huckster film aggregators who prey upon them. The odds are stacked against the indie filmmaker. The old distribution model of making money with your film is broken and there needs to be a change. The future of independent filmmaking is the entrepreneurial filmmaker or the film entrepreneur. In Rise of the Film Entrepreneur, I break down how to actually make money with your film projects and show you how to turn your indie film into a profitable business. With case studies examining successes and failures, this book shows you the step-by-step method to turn your passion into a profitable career. If you're making a feature film, series, or any other kind of video content, the Film Entrepreneur method will set you up for success. The book is available in paperback, ebook, and of course, audiobook. If you want to order it, just head over to www.filmbizbook.com. That's film, B-I-Z, book.com. And today's show is also sponsored by the Heart Chart Screenwriting Masterclass taught by legendary screenwriter James V. Hart, the writer of Bram Stoker's Dracula, Hook, and Contact, to name a few. His unique story mapping system will teach you how to get your script ready for production and the marketplace. To gain instant access, head over to bulletproofscreenwriting.tv forward slash heart chart. That's H-A-R-T chart. So guys, today on the show, we have returning champion Kyle Prohaska. And Kyle was on a very popular episode, episode number 200 of the Indie Film Hustle podcast, talking about how to use Facebook in order to sell your movies. And that episode was very, very well received by the tribe. And I wanted to talk to him now. I wanted to bring him back on the show because he has been developing new techniques on how to get an actual ROI on Facebook ads, getting a return on investment. The thing that always never really set right with me is spending $20 on a Facebook ad to promote a $299 rental or worse, even a free watch on Amazon. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense. But Kyle has been able to crack the code and has been using it with his clients now for a while, and it is consistently bringing him a good return on investment. And not only is he able to get that ROI, but he's also able to bring awareness to your film, which will then spill over into other areas of your marketing. It was quite, quite remarkable, so I cannot wait to share this episode with you. So without any further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Kyle Prohaska. I'd like to welcome back to the show returning champion, Kyle Prohaska, man. How you doing, brother? Good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, you know, it's. I wanted you to have back on the show because we were kind of going back and forth on Twitter a little bit. I think I, I think one of that old episode we did, which was number two hundred, uh, about Facebook marketing for filmmakers, which we were just discussing, was a, few, a couple years ago. So a couple things have changed since. Uh, yeah. Pre even pre COVID, a couple things have changed. Right. Uh, but post COVID is even not post during COVID. Nice. Um, a lot has changed, and you're like, "Hey, man, we should talk again." There's a lot of stuff that's different. So um, that's why I wanted to have you back, man. So let's just get into it, man. How has the Facebook marketing game changed, uh, in your opinion, since last we spoke? Oh man, I mean it. it... Just like anything, the rules seem to change constantly. The performance goes up and down. It's like a big roller coaster every year throughout the year. Um, You know, the, the, the difference in even how I would approach things, you know, years ago is, is now totally different just because of what you can do. The tools have improved, 
You know, they've also pared back some things that got them in some trouble. I'm sure everybody's aware of some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the whole ecosystem is is uh, constantly changing, and you have to stay on your or you got to it keeps you on your toes. I guess is what I would say. You know, um, so it's it has changed uh, quite a bit, and it's an ongoing sort of thing. So I have to keep my finger on the pulse constantly to make sure I'm paying attention to what's happening or not. Um, Like everybody, I'm sure, heard about the boycotting that was happening with a lot of big companies and Facebook. And, you know, I wasn't sure what's that going to do. You know, I know, I know, at least for me, it's like, well, I I can't pull back. I got all kinds of clients that are, you know, that have ongoing businesses and Facebook's a big part of their success. So they're not going anywhere. You know, they're not Honda, you know, or whatever the company. (laughs) Yeah, it's not Honda and Starbucks. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. So they, you know, so so I wasn't sure what that was going to do. It's been, uh, especially this year, you know, it has been a constant roller coaster. And uh, what you can and can't do is never entirely clear, I feel like. Um, It's sort of the Wild West, and it has been all along. Uh, so, yeah. so it's been interesting. It's like, I don't, I don't just do stuff now that's film related. Now I'm like working with some online colleges, for instance, that's been interesting because of COVID or, you know, there are nonprofits or there are, uh, and then of course, you know, filmmakers, but man, you gotta be careful now because they're cracking down on all kinds of things and I'm not doing anything shady, but their whole automated system even will crawl around for stuff. It, um, it, it, I find that, yeah, sometimes they'll flag stuff. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Like, yeah. and, but you'll let something else go. That's, you know, that's horrible. Terrible. And it takes like a week for it to disappear, you know, like recently with one of unmentioned video that I won't mention. Yes. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's like, it's pretty it's, crazy. And then there's, and then uh, there's Facebook jail and we could talk about Facebook jail a bit, which is a whole <laughs> other, uh, a, a whole other thing for people who don't know what Facebook jail is. It's not a pleasant thing to be. If you do something that they don't like, uh, not just advertising period. If you're doing posting stuff or you're doing something that's not um, acceptable, they will, they will block you for, uh, yeah, like for like it. It depends. I, you know, I've been in Facebook. I I have been in Facebook jail. Um, in my day, haven't been in a while. But uh, you kind of learn. You kind of yeah, learn. Yeah, you do. And 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 uh, you know, even for something as simple as like commenting on your own post too much and like responding to everything, you know, self promotion. It's like they'll kind of take away your commenting ability temporarily and then give it back to you. You know, stuff like that because they just don't. They're trying to. They're trying to cut down on as much spamminess as they can, you know. So if you go too hard, too fast, responding and answering every question and saying thank you to 200 people in an hour. You they know, don't you like might, it. Yeah, they don't like that at all. So it's a it's a constantly changing environment. And, you know, I, I, I've i been doing Facebook marketing now for, for uh, more than 10 years. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I look back way back you know what feels like now to what it used to be like then and and what it's like now it's just not even the same universe um and i don't even spend or suggest to people that i spend their money the same way you know it's just it's it's just different now and and on the filmmaking end you know there are tools now that you can utilize that you just couldn't you know five years ago uh that are now available uh like the like the conversion based stuff that i mentioned like that sort of stuff has been around but it hasn't been anywhere near as common as it is now uh, everybody seems like they're selling something or creating a store now using like Shopify or big commerce or uh, Squarespace, you know, everybody's so, trying to, it's not the uh, gig economy. I think I heard it called the hustle economy. Like everybody has like their, their thing. Their, yeah. <laughs> sir, yeah. that's, I, 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 everyone's just catching up with me, sir. I've been here for quite some time yeah. with the hustle, yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I mean, we, we, we both have our, our, uh, our stuff that we can point back to a decade ago where we were like selling physical, you know, physical oh, yeah. stuff, physical merch. And, um, and that, and that is honestly, I've swung back around where I don't do like theatrical much anymore. You know, I really kind of moved away from that and moved over to, okay, well, how do I help people sell something direct where they're going to either, uh, ship it themselves or they're going to have a, f- a fulfillment place to it. Um, I can track the sales. They can see the money's going in and going out. And, you know, or no like a digital or a digital box. or a digital products or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, digital products and and then there's there to me at least there's been like a surge in physical again where everybody left it alone and figured it was dead. Um but I think that was because the means of moving it felt um like unreachable. Like you could maybe place your product somewhere but 
it was going to cost a lot of money to make it and you didn't know if it was going to move. Where now you can sell it direct, where if you can move it and the ROI is there, you can justify kind of keeping the money in rotation. All right. Um, so so let's talk about a little bit about this. Um, well, I'm going to ask you a question first and then we're going to get into this and it might lead into that. And I've had a problem with this for a while. Can filmmakers actually get an ROI return on investment with Facebook ads if they're strictly just trying to get watches or getting people to try to buy or rent their films on iTunes or Amazon? Is there a model that that still works in? Yes. Yeah, so so the prime streaming side of things where you're getting paid like an ABOD, nah. You know, that's just really not a – that's more of a thing where you place it and you hope to kind of get into the right hole algorithmically, you know, where your your movie will kind of seem to get suggested around via their platform. And then you see people's numbers blow up and then they die in like a month. You know, I've seen movies just but it's a like, But it's a risk. It's like a gamble. It is. It, it's a gamble and it's to, it seems totally random as far as uh, anybody's outside influence on it. It just seems like it's Amazon – you know, and I've seen that work for movies that have like name talent where it's like their face on the cover and all of a sudden you'll see somebody's old romantic comedy do well because they happen to have an actor in it that was recognizable. But, you know, you mentioned the word model and people throw that word around, but like the model that I use all the time now for most people I'm doing stuff for is to have them sell something physical on a store they control if they can fulfill it themselves. Um run all the advertising in a conversion-based environment. So all the delivery is about triggering the, the purchase itself, right? So it's not like video views first and then link clicks to retarget and all that sort of stuff. It's kind of top to bottom all at the same time funnel-wise. Um, and what that does, and this is kind of the thing that took me a while to, to really realize, I had to do it on enough movies, is when you, when you leave the kind of awareness-based ad delivery alone, and you pivot towards conversion, you're telling Facebook to go get um, a very different result, right? Like it's easy for it to go get video views, link clicks, post engagements, landing page views are better, right? But they're still not the same as somebody physically buying something. So um, telling it to, to optimize for that um, means that your delivery is narrower and it costs more, right? Less people per dollar, that sort of thing. But the quality of the people it's delivering to changes dramatically. So if you get yourself to a place where even those ads pay for themselves and that's it, like say the ROI is like one, you know, or 1.2 or something that doesn't feel like much, the, the bump that you see over on Amazon, for instance, rental and buy, and the bump you see on an iTunes and things like that is tangible. Um, now, how is it, now, how is it? So if I'm selling a t-shirt, mm-hmm. let's say I'm, I'm selling a t-shirt for my horror movie sure. and, and, uh, it's good. And we set it up in Shopify. All right, so we have a Shopify site. We put on some T-shirts, uh, and and we're selling that T-shirt that may have something to do with my movie, may not have something to do with my movie. It might be a horror movie, but it might be worked into the movie somehow. It's it's in the ecosystem of my movie, right? right? Um, how does that convert to um, views uh, on, uh, let's say, an Amazon Prime or a Tubi or or rentals or sales? Sure. And a, and a shirt, a shirt would be different. I'm talking more about the movie itself. So like okay. people who didn't know your movie existed five minutes ago mm-hmm. and now hopefully they're, you know, some of them are checking out and getting it from you, you know, direct a download that you can track, you know. Oh, okay. or, oh so you're putting, so you're self distributing it through a digital file on like either a Vimeo like VHX or, or VHX you know, or Shopify has like a free app, but, it, but there's no DRM, things like that. Not everybody's going to care, but so, so the, the model is basically sell it in a trackable way, run conversion based ads. If you can break even great, if you do way better than that, great. Cause now you're making money on what you move, but all of the spillover awareness from people who don't buy it from you, um, a much bigger portion of them seem to gravitate towards the digital platforms. That wasn't true when I was running my video ads only, retargeting only. And I think that's because the the makeup of the people within the group that you fed it, that it'll deliver to, is much more exclusive. It's far more expensive to get to them. And as the pixel that you install for the tracking learns more about the makeup of the buyer, that delivery will improve over time. So you end up getting way higher quality awareness than you used to. If you just pick a lower intent thing like video views, link clicks, post, you know, post engagement, all that stuff, you get a lot of people in the top of the funnel, but you get all kinds and sorts of various intent. You know, when you do a conversion based campaign, it's factoring in what it knows about the users already. 
um, what it knows about the makeup of the buyer based on like previous data you have from your pixel. Hopefully, you know, if it's a totally cold thing, then that's can you, different. Can you stop real quick? Can you explain it to everybody what a pixel is? Sure. Yeah. Sorry. You, you, now, I know what a pixel is. I use pixels, but I want everybody right, to right. know. It's yeah, not that bad Adam Sandler movie. What is the pixel? <laughs> the, the Facebook pixel is something you set up um, in your business manager, which anybody can start one. If you have a Facebook page, you can you know go and sign up for a business manager. It's sort of the you know uh, bucket that all of your Instagram and Facebook pages and everything lives under. And then you have an area where you can create a pixel. And the pixel is something that it gets installed on your website, gets installed on your store, gets installed anywhere that you want to track the data of page views, of purchase triggers, of add to carts, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and from that, you know, when you do like a purchase based campaign, say you have like 100 previous purchases or 10 or five or whatever it is, Facebook goes, OK, what's the makeup of the people who triggered this thing you're telling me to go get? And then it will deliver within the target you fed it. Say so it was like people that like horror movies, people who like dramas of this sort or that sort. Um, it will try and pivot all the delivery towards people like those people. You know, um, because it's conversion based, you get to a lot less people and you pay a lot more per dollar for those people. But it's way higher quality traffic, higher intent traffic. So the people who don't want to buy it from you, who are never going to buy it from you, say it's like physical, right? Like lots of people don't buy physical. Some people do, but it's a way to get to the person who is the digital renter and buyer. Um, and because you have the pixel, Facebook knows that they have already purchased or rented films in general. Well, they, they won't know that they're okay. going to base it on the, cause that that's, that's really the problem and why this model is still a roundabout way, but it's still the most direct way. Amazon, iTunes, any ubiquitous platform doesn't allow you to track the sale from the ad to the rental. So there is no way to know they saw this ad and they got this, you know, and I got this rental. The only thing you can track is I know they saw this ad and bought from me or they rented it from me. Because BDX. you're controlling the platform. Right. So, so what I'm describing is getting yourself into a place where your ads are paying for themselves, which is something we didn't have. If you're not in a conversion based environment, you're just kind of getting, you're paying for a lot of awareness and it's all floating out there and you don't know what's connecting to what um and you're paying for a, for much lower intent people than you need to where if you do conversion based and say you move enough dvds to pay for the advertising and that's it what i'm saying is that you should see a a tangible bump when you go and check your digital numbers all that spillover from people who didn't buy it from you but you still delivered ads to them not all of them, of course, gravitate to digital, but a much higher percentage. Every single time I've ever tried to spend ads to bump someone's rental and digital numbers only, like in an awareness sort of campaign, uh, pick any other optimization, link clicks, landing page views, which you can't track, by the way, if you're sending mm-hmm. them to Amazon because there's no pixel over there. Right. So link clicks only, video views only. You can't get to enough people per dollar for the small percentage that does convert to make you money. There's just not enough money to go around. You right. need to have a trackable, higher margin sale that pays for the ads for you so that all the digital spillover is gravy. Like so, that, okay. that's the thing. All right. So if I so if I'm a filmmaker right now and I have a movie, and let's say I have a hundred thousand dollar movie and it, you know, let's say it's a genre, let's say it's a horror, you know, easy horror movie genre. Um, it might have a B level horror star in it. Okay. Right. Now, um, the way I would set up and I've got, I got five grand to start for advertising specifically. Mm -hmm. Now I have gone with the distributor for all the platforms and, and it's going out to, you know, Amazon and Tubi and all these other places, but I've retained the right to sell it on my website or on my digital, a digital platform online somewhere. I've been able to carve that out. So now I open up a Spotify account or, um, you know, put it on, uh, you know, wherever VHX, VMEO, one of those kind of places. Um, and we put the movie there for rental and for sale. So let's say for sale, it'll be nine ninety nine. dollars We're going to throw in a whole bunch of special features and stuff like that. Right, right. And three ninety nine for a rental. Mm-hmm. What you're saying is as opposed to, which is what most filmmakers do is they'll take that five grand, throw it into Facebook ads and try to drive them to Amazon or drive them to iTunes. Right. You, and even conversion, even if you use the conversion algorithm in Facebook ads, you still have no way of really knowing it other than maybe the 
the back end numbers. And you can't you can't you can't even do a conversion campaign in that instance because you don't have a way to track that Amazon sale. So no. the only way to run a conversion campaign is to sell it somewhere you control and it's trackable. And the options are really not there's not a lot of them, right? Like you have the Shopify type places that you can use, you have VHX, which they sort of hid their more traditional, like the old VHX is still there, but you kind of have to go yeah. digging. V- Vimeo, yeah, Vimeo, yeah, yeah. Like normal Vimeo doesn't give you the pixel option. So I would tell people like, don't just put it on Vimeo, can't track over there. Fine if you want to, put it over there, but send people to where the pixel is available because then you can see from this ad came these sales and here's how much came through these sales. You know, you so, need that ability. So then, all right, so if we continue with that that conversation, so then... Um, so then I have it on VHX and I have a pixel to it. And now I start putting in, we'll put in a thousand bucks to see what happens. And we push that in and now we're driving people to buy or rent from me specifically. And the people who are buying and renting from me will hopefully, or we could track it, start sure. paying for the advertising. For the as they roll through, right? And there yeah. might be, and, it, and if we get 1.5, 2 Double our money. Oh my! Now you're making money on your money, which is great. Great. But the, the the key to the model is, to answer your question directly is that plenty of people are going to have no interest in buying it from VHX, right? So, like in the last number of years, what's been totally clear is that everyone wants to try and push everyone to like a particular place. When I know for me, if I'm renting anything, I'm going to iTunes first. I'm an iTunes guy. Right. I use like iTunes gift cards constantly to rent stuff that I want to see or to buy it. I I think I rented something from Amazon once, right? So yeah, I'm an to, I, I, I'm an, I have an Apple t- Apple TV. I, right. I like I, I personally like I've never rented anything. Or I think I might have rented one or two things from Amazon. And but I and yet, if, if I rent anything, I buy. I and the opposite them. exists, right? People that of course. are just heavily in or the Google system or, or, or Google, right? Or Google, so right. or people that now, especially if they they skew younger and male, they're probably renting on uh, YouTube movies and things like that. You know, they're available over there. So. Everyone has their preferred thing. So it being available on like VHX only is going to cut down on the people that are going to convert through. But if you can get yourself to a place where the ROI is, like you said, is paying for itself, hopefully, right? Like that would be the point. Um, Or making money, obviously, is the goal. But in the event you were only breaking even, all of that spillover awareness, if it's available on those big ubiquitous places, should should get a pop. You so in other words, it. just because now there are people are aware of your movie, like, oh, I don't want to rent it on VHX. I'll go hunt it on iTunes or Amazon. And I've done that a million times. It I doesn't wanna... mean don't tell people that it's there, for no, instance. No. That's not what I mean. No, but, no. Um, but, but pivot all the ad delivery towards a trackable thing. Cause it, and this is one I want to make sure people understand. It changes the people Facebook delivers to. It changes the ad delivery. You know, it's going towards people that it knows are engaged buyers based on previous data. It's pivoting towards people who are more like the folks already triggering, hopefully, the purchase event on your pixel. So it's a different makeup of people. If I fed it the same two million horror fans and I did video views in one campaign and I did conversions on another, it's going to one's going to try and go after a much broader base of people and get you cheap video views, right? That are like three seconds only. And depending on how good the content is, maybe they'll watch deeper and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you'll have the other where it'll take that 2 million and it's probably going to focus on a, on a tiny little subset, right? Within that 2 million based on what it knows already and based on what it's learning as it goes. And that's who it's going to hyper-focus in on. Um, that everyone knows that 2 million are not going to be buyers, right? Like the, that's a much bigger group than are going to probably do anything no matter what you spend the money on. So pivoting the delivery towards people more likely to be buyers means that on like a per dollar level, you're more likely to get in front of people who are going to convert somewhere. But if you can optimize all of the delivery and the campaign around something you can see, it's way easier to keep the money running. Right. Like I've dumped plenty of money into like theatrical campaigns, awareness campaigns. And it's terrifying because even if you know that you're doing a good job as far as the metrics are concerned, you don't know what's happening on the other end. And it's way harder to ask people to continue spending when you can't really tell them what's happening. You know, it's I don't like being in that position. That's why I pivoted all my business away, because like it starts to eat away at you. There's only so much you can do conversion wise. Right. Like. Some movies, you're just going to have to 
do the traditional sort of campaign, right? Like a big theatrical movie, you got to spend money like everywhere in order to have a, even have a shot, right? Um, but for somebody who has a movie to sell, maybe they have some older films that they can pack together. Maybe they have some other products around that movie, like you said, merch, T-shirts, right? Uh, special exclusives that only you can sell. Nobody else can sell them. Um, if you can run ads that will pay, just pay for themselves, and that's as good as it gets, that's the best way to spend that five grand if it's available on a iTunes and Amazon because it changes the makeup of people that you deliver to with that five grand, and they're way more likely to be buyers. And then you could and also use – and this concept could also work on DVDs and Blu-rays or, or, or it's anything a, physical. It's a huge part of what I've been doing because – Everybody thinks that it's dead when I know I got like a zillion of them sitting over here. You know, I got a ton of Blu-rays and, and DVDs. I will buy physical as long as it's available. Um, and yeah, of course, everyone's not me, but a lot of people are still me. You know, it's not just older people. There are plenty of younger people. I mean, vinyls had to come back, for goodness sake. <laughs> Who would have thought that, you know, a number of years ago? So selling something physical, uh, similar to not assuming what platform people want to use, right? It's like, let people buy it the way that they're comfortable with. Plenty of folks will see your ads and go right to Amazon. Like anyone listening right now, I guarantee you, you've been at a Walmart and you were like, I wonder how much this is on Amazon. And you go and check on your phone because you want to find out if you're getting a good deal or not. Um, and you're comfortable with Amazon and you've probably used it a million times in your lifetime. So let people go where they're most comfortable because they're going to do that anyway. If they're interested in the movie, and they really think it's compelling, they'll probably go check whatever their their uh, most common kind of consumption platform is. And that's where they'll go first. They might check your site. They might even buy it from you. But odds are they're going to go and see if it's available in that thing they use all the time. So let people go where they're comfortable. That's why I'd like don't deny physical. If you can afford to make even just a small amount of, of units just to see, like don't bury yourself in copies if they're not going to move. But there are plenty of ways now to get stuff made cheaply and get a, get only get some made. Don't make a ton without any proof yet, but give it a shot. Make it available digitally. Make it available physically. Do it in a trackable space. Uh, it's, it's sort of a line I've repeated over and over again with people. But if I can't figure out a way to sell it directly to someone it's really unlikely I can spend their money another way and it work, right? Like that, that's what I've seen. So Over right now, so right now you wouldn't take on a client that is going to, you, you need them to either sell it on VHX or somewhere trackable or on a physical DVD or physical medium somehow that, which they obviously are tracking because they're actually f fulfilling it themselves. I, that, it's, it's always my first question. Are, how is it going to be available? If they say, Oh, it's only going to be over here. It's like, you know, it doesn't have to be available everywhere. But I, when I say you see a bump in other places, I'll even see a bump on eBay for some of these movies. Some of these movies are old. They came out 20 years ago and they're selling better now than they've sold in years. And you can go to eBay and search them and go to completed listings and see a bump from people that see an ad and they go and hunt around to see if they can so, find the DVD somewhere see if they else. Can find it. So, so like people are listing their DVD via their own account or they set up their own, you know, a uh, business account on eBay and they're catching sales from people that decide and think they're clever and go hunt over there, <laughs> you know, and they're still buying it from the filmmaker. So it, it's, it's a really interesting. interesting. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, once I, once I realized though, the digital bump was real, then it was like, okay, because someone who comes to me and says, hey, it's going to be on Amazon rental and buy only. Um, what can you do with, you know, whatever amount of money? And it's really hard for me to say yes to that now. I'm like, I, I would much prefer me spend it all in a conversion environment. I guarantee you you're going to get more buys and rentals over here. If I do the ads this way, I know that you'll get more people over here. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a big winner, but it means the amount of money that's going to result from the spend is likely to be much higher because it's and just too hard to get to enough people on a per dollar basis when you do like video views, link click retargeting, landing page view retargeting, like traditional funnel. It's really hard to run those kind of campaigns. But if you so look at it, so this is my film entrepreneurial mind uh, working. Um, so if we're going to a Shopify a site that we've built that we're selling the DVDs ourselves. We're, we're fulfilling them ourselves. If we have t-shirts, if we have ancillary products, if we package it with the movie, those are things we could track. 
Yes. Those are things we can track. And based off of that, that's still going to deal with the digital bump uh, yeah. because because it's still going towards uh, – there's still awareness of – and if you're just selling the T-shirt by itself, I see what you're saying. That's different. Right? That's different. But if you're selling a – Right, but if they're selling the movie and while they're buying the movie, you can either buy the special Cooper Super Duper Bloody Edition with the yes. with the fake axe, with the fake right. axe and the bloody T shirt for yeah. you know forty bucks. That's another that's another possibility because the people who are are interested in the rent of the movie, they very well might be interested in buying that T shirt if it's a cool design sure. and yes. maybe a prop or maybe inside of a a tin lunchbox or something like that. Uh, as a special raise edition, your, raise your checkout value. You know that's why for some of these folks that have come to me and said, "Okay, but what else you got? You have this movie, but what else? Upsells, you got? bumps, yeah, upsells, bumps, and and honestly, um, folks that have made a new movie but they have all these previous ones that to them are like worthless now, or that's oh, how no. they see them. Yeah, you know, I'm like, uh, like I, I and I won't mention movie names because I don't have permission for all that sure. stuff, but I can talk about it anonymously in a sense. Like there's a guy that. You know, he he's made movies for decades and he has one movie sort of dragging all the others along where that movie's selling fantastic. The new one's great. Selling everywhere He's getting bumps on digital. He's selling tons of units every month on his own store. Um, but he, we packed it with like his four old products, some of which are very old. But the whole pack is like twenty five bucks because those movies are so ancient. They haven't moved in years. And now he's selling more of them than he than he has in value proposition. To value yeah, proposition. so it, it's it's a uh, it is a really really great way to give old products new life, right? And and take the new one like whatever. I've even told folks like be agnostic in a sense about what movie you think is the winner. If you're someone who's made multiple things, forget what you think about your movie. Put them all in there and let them fight, and then just pivot where the where the where the clear ROI is. Don't worry about you know if it's your new one. I get it. That's a different story, but. You know, this this model has worked in even giving those older movies of that guy, for instance, digital bumps where like they're getting rentals that they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have thought. And that's just because people are landing there and they're seeing, oh, he has this other stuff. What's that one called? And, you know, they might not even buy the pack, but they're over on Amazon now, you know, checking it out on DVD and things like that. So, so you can and you could track the bumps just basically on the money that you're getting uh, yeah, on, I mean, from these other platforms. Not, it's as close as you can get, right? That's that's what I'm saying. This is as close as you can get because I've I've spent money every way I can think of to try and get a, a bump over on Amazon in a way that has an ROI that makes sense. And it just doesn't. You can't get to enough people per dollar. And because there's no tracking ability, you have no idea what target is working. Mm-hmm. You don't know which demographic is buying. You can't right. see anything. So if you do conversion ads, at least those can pay for themselves. Hopefully, right. And if it pays for them, and if it pays for itself, it's you, you're winning. If you can, even right. even if you're slightly losing, if it's ninety cents on the dollar, it's still you're paying ten cents for an amazing amount of awareness that will hopefully yes. bump elsewhere, and then the it's ROI way, turns in. Yeah, yeah, it's way way better than what than what had uh, what I've previously done. It's way better than what I did with my first movie way back. Like this, this is this is the thing now for me. Um, yeah, because video. Anybody- I was going to say video views are easy to get because they're going to they're going to focus on, oh, these guys watch videos and we need three seconds. And this guy and these all these people watch three seconds of this kind of video. You know, Facebook kind of knows out of their whole user base, like what chunk of everybody is more likely to perform these actions who are click happy people who love watching videos and who are people that have done a lot of buying. Right. So when you feed it a certain target, it's going to factor in what it knows from the pixel and it's going to factor in previously known data. And it's going to hyper focus on a chunk of that target because it knows they're more impulse by happy sort of people. Um, you know, and what, I feel like what people miss is that you don't just deliver to people who buy. It's all of the other people that are in the mix. So you still get video views. You still get storefront views. You still get engagement and comments and all that sort of stuff, but it, you're not optimizing around that, right? So that's all that's spill-off different. stuff. Yeah, it's what am I telling Facebook to do? If I'm telling it to go get video views, then that's what it's going to go get, and it's going to get me as many of them per dollar as it can afford in the bidding environment You know, of Facebook, just like on eBay. People are bidding for products. Well, Facebook's bidding to put your video up instead of somebody else's video, and that's all it's doing because it's all you told it to do. Same with link clicks. Get me a, as many of these per dollar as you can get me, and it'll go do that. 
Give me as many purchases per dollar as you can give me. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Now, if you had a funnel, let's say a sales mm-hmm. funnel, would link clicks make more sense? If you if your sales funnel is strong and you know right. it converts, does link if clicks make more sense? If you know it converts sense? and you have a funnel and there's enough money coming in and going out, and you like building a funnel like that takes time, takes yeah. typically testing. a lot more money, a lot of testing, right? You have to be. Um, a lot of people just don't have the room to fail. You know what I mean? They don't have the room to uh, to make those kind of mistakes, and, and they don't have the playroom to figure out if it's going to work that way. There are plenty of businesses where click funnels and, and those sort of things yeah. work great, right? But when you have like five, ten grand to spend, you have a new movie, you really need to get moving, and you need to get moving quick. Um, I just don't suggest it for people because it is no, it's so it's, hard it's to definitely much more an advanced scenario. Yeah, and, and that's not to say there's no funnel, right? You do conversion ads top and bottom, you can still retarget video viewers. You can still uh, retarget people that added to cart but they didn't buy, or landed on the store but didn't buy. Like you still funnel these people, right? Down the funnel. It's just so real quick. Explain funnel to people because I know you and I are talking about funnels. A lot of people might not understand what so, a funnel is. So like. You know, if you, I mean, everybody knows what like a funnel looks like. And at the bottom would be whatever action you want people to do, which in this case is hopefully buy something or it might not. Maybe it's a lead, you yeah. know, put in your email sort of thing. Um, you know, at the top of the funnel, you, if you break the funnel up into layers or stories, like in a building, it's like first impression is at the top, right? Whatever action the hook. is at the bottom, right? right. And, and um, you know, in an ad environment, you're trying to get people from the top to the bottom. So maybe that means they see a video first and then people are retargeted who saw the video. How do I get them to my site? Because they haven't visited yet. Okay, well, now they visited, but they didn't buy yet. So now I get hit them with a uh, another layer of ads that tries to seal the deal, right? There are all kinds of ways to structure a funnel like that. Um, you know, video views at the top, then link clicks or landing page views, then a conversion based campaign, maybe at the bottom, or it's all link click based all the way through there. There are a, a million ways to segment it out, right? The traditional like conversion based one for me now would be like conversion at the top, right? Um, with totally cold audiences and retarget, right? Like say they released their trailer months ago and there's video views there, or they have web views they've been tracking for months, or they have everybody who bought from them in the past or visit, visited their site for years. Get everybody in there, you know, start retargeting while you get people at the top of the funnel and yeah, work your way down. You know, it's like you have to figure out a structure that works for what you're doing, right? Like it's, it's not the same for everything, but most folks need something that's simple because they can't get too complicated with it. Um, they need it to be cost effective as quickly as possible because they don't tend to have enough money to lose for very long if it's going to be difficult, right? Um, and they need to be able to see what's happening. There's nothing worse for me now than oh. spending money where I can't see, right? And and I, I, I told you I did that drive-in based thing. You know, I was emailing you and there was a drive-in sort of release and, you know, lots of locations that sort of hopped around week to week and it was really, really hard. I didn't miss spending money that way at all because it was so, and the filmmaker was fine. He was like, I'm so glad that you care. You know, a lot of other people don't care, but I was just really bummed out that the results were spotty because I couldn't look at my campaigns and know what worked from this place that didn't work from that place. Yeah. You're a data guy. You, you got You got to see the data. And, and yeah, that's the problem I've always had with advertising in general, as a general statement before in the internet, before social media, advertising in general was always a roll of the dice. Whether you were buying a, a, a magazine page out layout, uh, an ad in the back of a newspaper, a billboard, to get an to track that ROI, you would just kind of like, well, I spent ten thousand in marketing and I brought in an extra fifteen thousand dollars in sales that wasn't there last month. I assume. That's right. there's a correlation, and that yes. was what advertising was for for decades. And then yes. then Facebook showed up, and Google ads showed up, and all of a sudden now you could start tracking every little aspect of the business. But like you've so elo- eloquently have put in this interview, that you kind of like were throwing money in the air. Yes, there's trackable things, but you really. If you, unless you have complete control of the whole ecosystem of the facial pic, the, 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 the pixel, 
um, this and that to see what's converting, what's not converting. Without that, you're literally awareness. Awareness campaigns are essentially putting a billboard up. Yes, they're billboards, which like if you have a local coffee shop in a town of 1200, by all means, run a awareness based campaign to everyone who lives within 10 miles because it's cheap to deliver to them all like a million times a week. That would be a good way to go in that instance, but not right. when you have a movie for sale and you're trying to find a buyer amongst a sea of people who have endless things to watch anytime that they want. What makes what makes you so special, right? Like it's hard to get people's attention. It's hard to get people to look at you and not at whatever whatever other thing they can watch mm-hmm. that night. So, you know, and, and our people and go. And so, our people, our people actually, you know, because I've been saying for a long time. TVOD is dead, you know, and, and transactional video on demand is dead unless you can drive traffic or unless you have right. an audience that right. is willing to pay for it. Those are the two what ifs. If you just throw it up on iTunes, Amazon, and Google and go, let nope. the money come in, those uh-huh. days are gone. That's 2010. Yes. That's that's when that happened. Yeah. When, when, when my movie went up on like VOD via the cable box, you yes. know, in yeah. 2010 or whatever it was there were like a handful of movies available. So of course it did sales because people were there and there wasn't anything to watch. Right. You know, now there's a million things. So changing what you have to change, how you look at this stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like people are willing to be ruthless on the page and then they're ruthless in the editing room. And then when it comes time to sell it, nobody wants to be ruthless. So did you (laughs) stop? You know, it's it's right. Like that. You have to stop looking at it the way you always have. People are not just going to show up to watch your thing. There's just too many things so, for them to watch. Are you telling me that that my film is not genius and and <laughs> and that everybody – my baby is not beautiful and that I, everybody is not just going to show up? Baby, right? Like that's really the thing that drives people nuts is it could be the most beautiful baby. You might be a genius. It's but not even a movie. It's there's really a ton a- of people out there and they just don't know that you exist or your movie exists. It's the same problem. If you have a good movie or a movie that's not so great but you have no choice and it's as good as you could make it at the time – it doesn't really matter between the two. You have the same problem. No one knows it's there. Can we? Can we? Can we dismiss a, a myth right now? Debunk a myth right now on this sure. show. A lot of people, I've I've heard this a thousand times. The cream rises to the top, meaning that if it's good enough, it will find an audience. I have to disagree nowadays. <laughs> I mean, if yes, if you happen to get picked up by um, a tastemaker. Sure. Like Sundance, South by eight twenty four, Neon, Vertical. Hey, that's not a sure thing either. Now, that, and even I, then, that's not a sure thing anymore. But they say if yeah. it's really good, it's going to find an audience. I disagree one hundred and ten percent. I think that without understanding your audience, without creating a product for your audience, without sure. understanding the marketing and how to get to that audience, I don't care how good it is, unless you've got a tastemaker with some major power <clears throat> behind it to come in and go, this guy is good. This girl's movie is great. And even then, even then, it doesn't Man, yeah. guarantee anything. I well, don't want that. I want people to think, that, I, want, was, I really want people to understand that. mattered more, you know, mm-hmm. when the world was different. <clears throat> you know, it's like we don't live in the Kevin Smith Sundance world anymore. We don't mm-hmm. live in the, you know, it's not El Mariachi <laughs> anymore. Like, if you have something and you have something that's good, I would say that what we're talking about is even more important because this stuff matters even more when you have something that's really good. Yeah, because like, it's it, easy. I, it's easier to sell good stuff than it is to sell bad yes, stuff. <laughs> of course, right? Just, of course you know. So, so, and and you know, so that that has been a big factor. Like, I'll get an email from somebody, and I, you know, I have a good gut for that sort of thing. At least I know whether or not it, I think it has like that impulse buy thing. Because a lot of movies just don't, even really good movies don't, right? So there's categories of movies. There's like good movies that have that impulse buy appeal. And then there's movies that are good that don't have that impulse buy appeal because they're liked by a smaller group of people. It's not obvious to someone that it's going to be like, it's hard to explain to somebody why they're like drama that looks good is still hard to sell. Well, so I'll, I'll use a perfect example. If I showed up tomorrow with Green Book, as that's my film, Green Book is my film. It doesn't particularly have the stars in it. Let's say we have lesser stars in it, but the same director, same script. Um, but let's say quality acting, like the acting is still stellar. Yeah. 
that's a tough movie to sell without major millions of dollars pushing it. And it won the Oscar. Right. You no, know, it's, par- it's absolutely Parasite. So, Parasite. It doesn't work tough. for everything. Like, no, that's, it that's, uh, it's, not a, it's not magic. It's really, really not. You have to have the right movie. Um, you have to have the right financial situation, for instance. If your movie is buried in insane costs where the movie already costs like probably more than it should have and all that sort of stuff – um, then it's tough. But I try and tell folks, though, like when it works, though, like when what we're specifically talking about works, it really works. And that's what's great. Is that yeah. if you it's a home to, run. And, it's and not it it's not a foul ball. It's a home run. No, no, no. But, you know, it, when it works, it works really, really well. And um, it's it's actually not that crazy to try. Right. Like there it's crazy to spend fifty thousand dollars, one hundred thousand dollars on your your uh, uh small theatrical campaign where you have no idea if people are going to show up or not. I would never do that. I mean, that's, that, I mean right, it's insane. Like a it's lot insanity. of people do, right? Or, or uh, I've worked on lots of limited releases or Fathom, you know, Fathom events, things like that, where lots of money has to get dumped in because you don't have a choice. If you're going to go that big and you're going to give that a real shot, you have to spend a lot of money per theater. Otherwise, you're not even giving it a fair shot. But is that even right? like, well, obviously that's not a business model now that we can talk about. <laughs> so I that's mean, all. It's, it's like it, it works for some things, but most things it's it's not going to be the right thing for your movie. So so, you know, when this works, it works good and it doesn't cost a lot to find out. Right. So that's important for you people could test to it pretty quick. Like, you could test pretty quickly. Yeah. And it, and it doesn't take very long to like set up a like I, I push everybody to Shopify. Like I'm not paid by Shopify. There's no sponsorships here or anything, mm-hmm. but. They they simply have the best system I've found where uh, it's fast to set up. It works really good. It connects to all the different ways people might want to pay, you know. Um, and it, and it, and the UI experience on a phone, where most of your sales are going to come from now, is fantastic. It's so easy. It gets out of the way. That's what you need. You don't need some fancy, you know, difficult to navigate website. You need people to just land there, see what you have. Is it, you know, uh, are, are the prices easy to see? You know, is it easy to navigate and check out? Like, it's the most efficient system I've been able to, to find, and I've tried a couple by now. So, you know, setting that up is not hard. And then I know the physical part scares people because they're like, you know, I don't want to have a bunch of boxes sitting in my garage. You know, that's happened to – happens all the time. But, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't take much now to get something like that offered, you know, and give it a shot. Um, setting up your own digital, uh, your own digital transactional thing like VHX is not hard to sign up for either. Like all this stuff doesn't cost a lot to sort of get it all in place. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I realize if you've never run at your own advertising before, it can just seem like this insane mountain. <laughs> um, but it's, it, I would encourage people, it is in your best interest to give it a real try, like set up a business manager, get in there, you know? <laughs> If you have to save up some money just to see what the ecosystem ecosystem is like, set up your own campaign. There are so many YouTube videos. Oh and, no, there's and, there's a, and there's a lot of paid courses you could take as well that are from good people. There's a lot of crap out there. There is a lot of crap. I say that, but there, it, but there's no excuse for you to not give it a shot. I, I mean, I'll definitely say that. Well, so um, look, and I'll, I'll give you my experience with it. I've been I I've danced with with Facebook now for for years. Before mm-hmm. I even opened up any film hustle, when I had my old business, I would use Facebook ads and it's, it's daunting. It's daunting because it is a fairly big beast. I'm a fairly yeah. educated person in this space. You know, I can talk to you pretty clearly about things sure. and it's still intimidating for me because there's so much unknown about the process. There is this, like yeah. you were saying, like, I, I don't know. Is it working? Is it not? I see the conversion, but is it really converting? And I don't know. Like it's, it's, there's yeah. so much that it's intimidating to someone like me who's fairly educated in this, let alone someone who doesn't even understand any of it yeah, is a little bit scary. It could be it's a little scary. bit overwhelming. This yeah. model that you're talking about makes all the sense in the world. It, it, it just is the only way I can see moving forward with. I wish I had it. 10 years ago. Do you not? I mean, you think oh, of like, course. If, like, you, if you, yeah, if you had a way to track like what you're talking about for this, for, for film specifically, not for other products, but for film specifically that you, that you have something paying for the advertising and the spill off 
is trackable just purely on the numbers that you're getting on these other platforms, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. And you have you have data to back it up because you've done it with clients and, and it's working. It makes sense. But even that is still a fairly complex system. Everything you've said I'm, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I could do this. I could do this. Set that over here. Set that over there. But I'm, yeah. I'm well versed in this space, in the digital yeah. world. Um, a lot of filmmakers are not. So right. it, it is – it is, it's easy to start it up and sure. open up a business management account um, and, and put out some ads. If you want to try to do conversions first, do that. If not, just see if you could do some videos. That, like, if, do, I would say, I would say if you're, if you're, if, if you're not hanging your whole campaign on it right now and you're simply right. like, it's your trailer release, for instance, right. put your trailer out, um, you know, listen to our previous conversation from a couple of years back where we spent like half the time discussing why a piece of content, which I know makes a lot of filmmakers want to barf. I'm just using the word. Don't don't kill mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You know what you cut and made that you're going to put money on. Really think through, you know, how you put together your promo material and things like that, because if you're going to put money on it, it's a different environment than somebody who knows you who's seeing you share your own trailer on your wall. Like if you're putting something in front of someone who they didn't know your movie existed till two seconds ago, what do they see first? Does it give them context right away? If it's a horror film, does a horror movie fan know it's a horror film or do they have to watch half of it before they find out? It's not a good thing when you're paying on a purview basis, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, there's all kinds of factors there, but a video view campaign or something small like that would be the simplest thing for someone to set up. Who's never set up a campaign before. You know, put a few targets in that you think are obvious. Just start somewhere. You know. It's, so when you say targets, so when you say aim it at some targets, uh, yeah, if yeah. I if I may translate, that means like if you have a horror movie, you'll go, hey, um, I have a slasher movie I made. Why don't I focus on people who like slasher films or yeah, like, like specific all movies? The movies in that are comparable and see if they show up. You know, and see if they and then like go oh, do some research about possible demographics that are more obvious for something like that. I assume, you know, some of that already because you made the movie. But if you don't, that's fine. That's why the Internet's there. Go Google and look it up, you know, do some research. Um, but a simple campaign that's just like to launch your trailer, put a little money on it, find out uh, who's in, who's reacting the best, for instance. It's great info. You know, even if you never do what any of what we're talking about, um, it drives me crazy that people aren't willing to like test their con test their content out because they're so hyped up on putting out their trailer on this day, like everywhere, right? That they won't put it out kind of as a test or post that'll like disappear in 48 hours and put a little money on it and find out or put three I'm assuming all of this stuff about who's going to buy this. What if what if I put this out and spend some money on it for two days and the results suck? You might want to know that before you go and spend the rest of your money or, on this right. assumption. Or you could just like do like three or four versions of the trailer and do That's a test campaign. Yeah, yeah, do a test campaign and see which one works and, and then you, pump money behind that one. And if, yeah, and if you upload it in uh, – which I know all of this is going to get in the weeds for folks. But if you upload those test videos that you might have in Ads Manager only, then they'll live as what's like a dark post. It's not like a public post out front on your page. Mm -hmm. Once those ads are off, those posts will disappear. They'll okay. fade away. Right. You know, they'll get buried by today's craziness and all the posts that are out there. And is there stuff going on today? What are you talking about, sir? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so like, don't be afraid of putting something out there. Right. You know, it's great to find out whether or not all of these assumptions you've made about who's going to like what you spent all this time on, if they're right or not. You know, it's like test for goodness sake, test. You don't have to spend that much to find out, you know, like this is as cheap as it gets. And that's the other part is like, I know Facebook comes under fire for all kinds of things. And, you know, so do all the other huge companies, but Facebook is by far the best place to start for somebody who, especially is smaller, if you don't have a lot of money to spend. If, you, if, yeah. if what you have to offer is really specific and you require like niche audience interaction and stuff, there's just no better place to go. What, you know, as far as the targeting is concerned, what's available, you can find articles upon articles about some of the stuff that people are angry about, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about typing in, you know, Friday the 13th for your horror movie and being able to, you know, go after folks that like those movies, I'm not talking about using data you shouldn't be using. It's just sort of like the publicly available, obvious stuff is honestly the best place to start. Like, I don't think people realize just how smart their ad system is, where if you feed it um, 
what kind of for it, movie to movie, but if you feed it a lot of obvious stuff, you'd be surprised how well it'll actually do if you give it some time and space. And you, like you said, you, if you have a good movie, it's not much easier to sell it. You know, so this is good stuff. If you think you have something good and you can't get a, you know, a deal somewhere or if the deals are bad, right, um, this is a great thing to look into. I was really encouraged when I emailed Jim, uh, Jim Cummings mm-hmm. before Thunder Road came out. Um, I emailed him and just said, hey, like, this looks really great. Like, if you need any help with anything, like, I'd love to just like, you know, help with whatever. And he hit back and said, thank you. But he was planning on running all of his own ads. And I was, I wasn't bummed out about that. I was like, great. You know, that's awesome. Like that, that case study is now available now. It's now downloadable, you know, where they talk about, there's a section about what they did on Facebook, you know, but like, that's what it should be like. It should be. They're there. And, and so long as you, so long as you don't do anything incredibly foolish, you should generally be just fine. So not a thousand dollars a day is not, 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 no. no Well, yeah, it's like, don't spend too much money too fast. Don't try and sell masks on Facebook. Probably not going to be a good idea. Um, Damn it. I just launched my ad campaign today on that. People get banned and kicked off constantly for selling, you know, all kinds of things they shouldn't be. You know, if you're a movie, it's just like set up a simple store, make it trackable. It doesn't take all that long. Make sure it's available. Like here, here's a big thing. I want to make sure I say this because I'll tell people I won't spend your money at all until this is done. If it's not available digitally, in line with what we were discussing, mm-hmm. if it's not available digitally, I won't spend their money to move the physical units yet. I will do anything I can to convince them to let me to wait. Just let me wait until it's on Amazon, for instance. I don't want to try and move units on your store because I know that they're leaving money on the table, you know, over here. So if it isn't published over here yet, Wait. I don't want to run the ads for the physical units because I know for sure that they're going to get a real bump over here and there's money over there that they're not getting. Um, so there's all kinds of factors here, I realize. Um, it's not it's not about confusing people, but you can post your movie in most of the big platforms easily now, especially Amazon, right? Like I know everybody has their thoughts on that and Man, has it taken a long time for them to publish things lately? I don't know if you've gotten any. Oh, no, I've heard. No, I've heard. Um, that, that's yet another thing for folks where I've told them, I'm like, look it, upload it, make sure all the settings are right, hit publish, and forget about it. Don't worry about it being public on Amazon for a week before your movie release date is supposed to be. Just forget about it. Make sure it's there before you're spending money. Don't worry about the fact that it's there because for some of these movies, you're not, knows it's there. You're not the next yes. Marvel movie. No one cares it's, about it's, their release date. Don't the- worry about <laughs> that anymore. Make sure that it's available once it's time to spend the money. Right. That's all. That's the most important thing. But can we can we agree on one thing though? Um, the house always wins. Uh, Zuckerberg is the one who is oh, winning. Sure. Is, uh, the house always wins when it comes to Facebook ads. <laughs> like, and, they, well, and any 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 of these ad platforms and things, it's like, look, I get it. You know, uh, sometimes it's really easy to hate the system. You know, but find the tools that are available to you. Work within the box that you're forced to work in, and figure out how to win in it. And stop, not stop complaining, because there are plenty of legitimate arguments against some of the practices of some of these companies. Right? I'm saying, look. No matter what, today, tomorrow, a week from now, we got plenty of folks who have movies that they made, they worked really hard on, that they want to continue to sell because they have bills to pay, and they have themselves to take care of, and they'd love to make another movie. So as so long as we're not doing anything wrong and we're just trying to mm-hmm. find people who, who are hopefully going to like what we're putting in front of them, I have no problems. You know, it's like, this is the box. Do you want to win or make movies or not? Right? It's just like, uh, I don't know what to tell folks, but... I haven't found another system other than what we're talking about that seems ideal for a lot of the indie filmmakers I know. And I'm actually trying to reach up a little bit higher um, towards folks that because of COVID, for instance, right? You got movies coming out that would traditionally have all of this ad money to spend and they would do a traditionally big release. It's really hard to find someone who will spend a limited theatrical sized budget on a digital release for instance you just can't get anybody to do it they they can't wrap their head around why they would they should spend you know these big amounts of money on their uh physical and di- <laughs> digital release when i'm like why 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 would you not 
why would you not? Why, why are the folks that spend a couple thousand dollars a month or something, you know, making this amount when you have this big movie that now is getting dumped out there? Why would you not at least try? You don't have to commit, right? That's the difference with these theatrical campaigns is you sort of have this big number that you know for sure it's all going to get spent, right? Across all these different ways. It's all going to get spent. Why not try and, and craft a campaign where if it's working, you have a, an amount of a certain size that maybe you can roll through, right? Mm. But start with a smaller chunk. So long as the money's coming in and coming out, you can start to scale up. That's the beauty of some of this is that it's not about the day the movie comes out, right? It's the theatrical thing is like we have to hit this weekend and that's going to set the tone for the rest of the release, right? You're sort of like peaking and then you're going to roll off and maybe you'll sort of hang around longer than usual and that sort of thing. But it's all, all the chips are put on that thing. You don't have to do that in this model. You can certainly try and focus where you think the urgency is going to be highest right. because you have other stuff going on, other PR and things like that. But that's why this model is working for movies that are 20 years old. You know, there are more people who didn't know that these movies exist and now they do and they still like to buy physicals. So they are or they're renting it tonight, you know, so this can work for movies that are older. This can work for movies that are new and you don't have to worry about all of the, the focus being dogpiled on that few weeks. You can chart out, you know, a much longer tail of focus for this sort of stuff. And if they're right. coming in, you right. can see it, right? Like you can look at it and go, okay, here's where we're at. Here's our monthly average. So long as we hold within a certain zone, you can start to chart out what you, what you think you need to do. And that's a whole new world, you know. That, right, as opposed what, to putting all the pressure on the first thirty days or sixty right. days. Oh, you now can, the movie's dead. You know, no, no, it's not. It's not dead. You know, if you have something that people want to buy, then why wouldn't you? You know, it's just like it doesn't make any sense. Do you have a movie that people are going to be interested in or not? Or is there something that maybe dates it, that maybe hurts it, or something? There are examples you can think of, but like otherwise, um, do you have something that people enough people that are out there are going to be interested in checking out. Is it available where they're probably going to want to go get it? You know, um, can you run any advertising or can't you risk any money? Some folks just can't risk anything and they're already in a tough spot. Right. So I can sympathize with that. Um, but this doesn't work unless you're willing to, to really try, you know, and take a swing. You don't have to light money on fire. This is the opposite of that. Right. Um, if there's money going in and money uh, money coming out and you can see it and it's trackable, it's way easier to spend more. That's the other thing that's right. great. It's easier right. to justify. It's not hard to look to your investors, for instance, and say, I know this isn't going the way that we hoped or we didn't get the release that we wanted and now it's out. But we spent this. We got that. Maybe we can scale to a certain mark. And then there's a consistent amount of revenue coming in. That's that's not that wasn't normal, you know, a, a while back. You would sort of billboard, right? You would just have like your video continually sort of going out there and you would sort of run any, uh, any other, you know, link click ads you could run or banner ads. Right. I mean, how big oh, God. Jesus. Yeah, you know, this is a different, uh, different world we're living in now. And there's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with doing pre-awareness for your movie. I'm not saying that either I'm saying a lot of folks just don't have the money to, to, to do it. Right. Like there, I've suggested for, Plenty of people who don't have a lot of money to spend. Don't worry about spending a dime until it's available, <laughs> like on on release day, if, if need be, then start the money because you don't want someone to see the ad, go look it up and it's not there. You know, the more all that pre-awareness is going to require you to get back to everyone a second time, which means, oh, now we have to pay to get in front of them again and again and again. You know, um, that might be normal in kind of your campaign as it rolls forward where you mm -hmm. got to continue to go after them. Um, but you got to look at what you can risk, you know, and what, and what kind of situation that you're in. Every movie's different. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm, I'm really encouraged that these tools exist and I'm glad that they're available. Um, and I think folks should try it. I mean, that's the thing. I know it's scary, but what are what are the what are the alternatives right now, right? <laughs> well, the alternative, sir, is to to sign with a a, a, a film distributor, and they're going to handle everything, and they just send you a check, um, right. on time, on time, on time, and it never bounces. So that yeah. gen that's generally the what is taught at school, 
Is that not right? That is that what's taught at film schools. Like, yeah, the distributor will take care of that for you. You don't don't worry yourself about the business or the marketing. That's let that let let to the other people. You could just be creative and be an artist. I mean, I, it's certainly a factor. Um, even the deals now that you might sign that are good, you know, yes. you have to factor in like, can you, you know, or somebody's going to aggregate things for you. Mm. You know, it's like, can you, uh, like, I would su- suggest for folks uh, carve out Amazon for yourself. You know, it won't What's happen. That? It won't yeah, happen. No, they, won't. It, it, they won't do it. How you can carve any start chopping it up. They won't do it at all. But um, you, you won't know. get you won't get Amazon. But you you might be able to get uh, being able to sell it on your own platform. You might be able right. to get DVDs like, and physical. That they don't touch those as much. It doesn't affect their core yeah. business. But there's no way they're going to get rid of any of the S five T bot or A bots. All the more reason when you have to wait so long to find out if anything's happening, other than like hearing from people, seeing your reviews maybe go up, you know, mm-hmm. a couple of different things that that'll give you some kind of indicator. Mm-hmm. Um, all the more reason to spend the money in a zone where a dollar came in and a dollar came out or a dollar came in and three dollars came out. At least, you know, um, cause it happened, it happened to me. I did an experiment in January where I had two of my old movies and I contacted other people who I had sold stuff for. And I said, okay, will you send me a certain amount of units to my house? I'm going to try something. And I started a store out of the blue, like at the very end of the year to get it all ready. I bought bubble mailers, you know, yeah. I did all the stuff that, mm-hmm. I, that I hadn't done in, in a long time because I was doing it for our, for other people. But, um, and I, and I, and I decided what if I try and do this like I'm encouraging other people to and do it with like much bigger numbers. Like I had the, I had the capital that I could burn. Um, so long as it was profitable or it was break even, I could, I could afford to give it a shot and see, uh, what some of the numbers might look like if you didn't, I mean, in this case, I only own two of the movies that, that turned out to be the problem, right? Is like the margins were there. So long as you, you got to own your stuff, if you're selling a bunch of other stuff that costs way too much to get a hold of and all that sort of stuff, margins get, get eaten up. Right. But it was like $45,000 of gross sales in like a two and a half month stretch. That's not bad. It it wasn't, it wasn't bad. And that was spending more money than I could get a lot of other people to spend per day. Like they just couldn't wrap their head around spending more. And I'm like, if the results are there, are there scale, scale, just pump in more money. Yeah. Way higher than I was prepared for. And it was like a problem as far as fulfillment goes. I was like packing with my wife down in the garage, you know? Oh, Um, I've been there. I know exactly. exactly it It was an experiment in what happens when you spend bigger numbers and these movies were older. Right. This is older stuff. So it was like it, I, it was it was to prove to certain other folks that I, I will not name that. Look, here's what happens if you forget for a second whether the movie's old or new and you look at whether or not it's sellable and you really commit, you know, what's possible. If I'd owned all of those movies, I mean, you could just cleaned up the whole year. It would have eaten up all my time, of course. But like if 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 those were if that was the point. Right. If the point was to make an income and to sell my stuff, um, it would have been the easy. It would have, would have been the perfect thing to keep doing, you know. So I shut it down once COVID hit because you know it was like, oh, what am I going to do? Go to the post office every day with a trunk full of boxes, you know, and and walk. I just didn't want to do it, so I shut everything down. But I had proven my point at that at that time, which was look what happens when you spend um, what was like, I don't know. Honestly, I would have to go look at the numbers. I don't remember what they were now, but they were they were large on a daily spend sort of level in order to get that. And then I got, and this is in line with what we were just discussing. I had to wait forever for my older films that had signed with an old aggregator that's been around forever to like send me my checks for the January, February, March, all that sort of stuff. Right? I got much bigger checks than I was expecting. Bumps. <laughs> so bumps. bumps. Real bumps. It took forever to find out if they were there. So that would be the situation quite a few people are in if they sign with somebody for all the platform placement. Interesting. But like the bump was there. And that wasn't – I'm not basing everything we're discussing on that experiment. Sure, I of course. I'm it for people. But I just wanted to see, well, let me do it with my own stuff and spend more than everybody else is spending and see what happens. You yeah, know? The, dream, the result was the same. The dream is to be able to put a dollar in and get $2 back. And if that's – or five dollars back, and you just do that all day. You just keep like if it's a thousand, you know, and then you just scale as big as you can till yeah. you run out of market. 
and, and if you have and if you have problems, you pivot, right? You know, cut a uh, pull a pull a different clip from the movie, uh, cut a new trailer. Uh, it's all the stuff nobody wants. To it's do. constantly it's like, you're constantly it's in flux. There's no it's not like if this month uh, this week I made five to one return on my dollar. In three months, it doesn't mean that that same situation is no. going to exist. You're no. going to be pivoting, and that's moving. It's important for people to know that it's like the uh, the Facebook ecosystem changes every month. You know, when the boycotts hit, it changed all kinds of things. It seemed where like traffic went way up and it was way cheaper, but the quality of the traffic seemed to go down. And people that were making X every month also were making less. And I had to explain to people, look, it doesn't matter what I'm trying. The normal is kind of evening out here for you. Sure, you know? sure, sure. So, but next month isn't necessarily going to be the same. Right. And and we have an election coming up, right? So costs and ad costs go up. Everybody starts flooding all of the, you know, the inventory with junk, unfortunately. But it means right. that ads get more expensive, right? And the holidays, right? How how crazy are the holidays going to be? There's no Black Friday craziness going on this year at physical places. So it's all online. It's all online. It's going to be a bombardment this year when, when it comes time for the holiday. So um, it's going to be nuts. But well, cut. all of this stuff is available for anybody that wants to go look. And any information I'm talking about is available too. If you just go look around, dig it up. Kyle, man, I know we could talk for at least another two or three hours uh, yeah. about this stuff. We could geek out pretty hard on this. But uh, I appreciate your time, man. And thank you for um, for enlightening the tribe a little bit about how to use Facebook ads in the current state. And you've laid out a model that is the best shot you've got, I think, to being able to use Facebook ads in a way that actually turns into an ROI. And if anybody wants to reach out to you, where do they, uh, where do they go? Um, you can, you can reach me on Twitter or you find me on Facebook. You know, you can just message me, you know, and send me a DM. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be uh, happy to, to try and help with anything I can. And I'll put you, I'll put all his information in the show notes. Thanks again, Kyle, for being that man. Stay safe out there. Thank you so much, Kyle, for coming on the show and dropping those Facebook knowledge bombs on the tribe today. Thank you so much, Kyle. If you want to get links to anything we spoke about in this episode, including how to get a hold of Kyle, head over to the show notes at IndieFilmMuscle.com forward slash 430. Thank you so much for listening, guys. As always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 